We're now ready to start the study of circuit analysis. And to design circuits and analyze circuits, one of the things we need to do is have something to build circuits with. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. The idea is we're going to have three circuit elements. The circuit elements are called resistor, capacitor, iterator, and inductor. Okay, these are the three passive or two element components or circuit elements that we're going to use to design a lot of different kinds of circuits. We're going to have, first I want to introduce a symbol for each one of these so we can talk about it and draw make drawings of it and first is going to be the resistor. The resistor symbol looks like this. It's a zigzag line like that representing current going through and being resisted having to do some work. Uh, another symbol for resistor looks like this used in other parts of the world besides the United States and Japan. That's what a resistor looks like and the symbol we use is R. Now for the capacitor, capacitor symbol is actually a capacitor is built from two conductors or metal objects that are placed close together. Most capacitors sort of look like that when they're actually built and the symbol for a capacitor is a C. And finally for the inductor, we'll do inductors like this. An inductor is actually built from a coil of wire. And so when we draw an inductor symbol, we draw a little coil of wire like that. And the symbol is L, which is a little odd. It could be called I, but the symbol for I was already taken by current, which is from the French for intensity. And we couldn't use C for current because the C is used here. So it's a little quirk of our nomenclature. All right. Each of, these, each of these components has an equation that goes along with it that relates the voltage to the current. Now, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to label the voltages and currents on here in a very important uh, convention for drawing circuits. Let's do that. When we talk about the voltage on a component, we can label it however we want, plus, minus, V. And we draw the current going in. I'll just label a little I there. And we'll do it on all these. The current goes into the positive terminal. The current goes into the positive terminal. So that's V on the capacitor. And, and finally, and the current goes in. And we're going to be very consistent about this, and that's going to keep us from making mistakes. All right, so let's go back to our resistor, and we're going to do the equation for a resistor. What is the, the IV equation for a resistor? IV equation means what relates current to voltage. And for a resistor, it's V equals I times R. So the voltage across a resistor is equal to the current through the resistor times this constant of proportionality that we call the resistance. This has a very important name. This is called Ohm's Law, and you're going to use this a lot. So that's Ohm's Law right there. This is Ohm's Law. Now for the IV relationship for the capacitor, the capacitor has the property that the current through the capacitor is proportional to the rate of change of the voltage. Not to the voltage, but to the rate of change of the voltage. And the way we write that is current equals C is the, is the proportionality constant. And we write dV dt. So this is the rate of change of voltage with respect to time. We multiply that by this property of this device called the capacitance. And that gives us the current. This, is, this doesn't have a special name, but it's, I'm going to refer to it as the capacitor equation. So now we have two equations. Let's do the third equation, which is for the inductor. The inductor has the property. It's very similar to the capacitor. It has the property that the voltage across is proportional to the time rate of change of the current flowing through the inductor. 
So this is a similar but opposite of how a capacitor works. The voltage is proportional to the time rate of change of current. And the way we write that is voltage equals L di dt. So voltage is proportional. The proportionality constant is the inductance, the inductance of the inductor. And this is the time rate of change of voltage, of, of, sorry, the time rate of change of current flowing through the inductor. So this gives us our three equations. Here they are. Here they are. This is, uh, these are our three element equations. And we're going to use these all the time right there. Those three equations are the three equations that we'll use when we analyze circuits. This is the core of it. Now I want to do two more things we have to talk about. We have to talk about sources. We have to have power coming from somewhere. We have two kinds of sources, and this provides power and input signals to our, to our circuit that we want to build. We have a voltage source, voltage, and we have a current source. Those are the two kinds of, of sources. The symbol for a voltage source, symbol for a voltage source, we actually have two. One of them looks like this. It's a circle. And we'll put a little plus and minus sign. And that has V. That's how that's labeled. The other way to draw a voltage source is if it's a battery in particular, is it looks like a battery symbol looks like this. Doot. That's a battery symbol. And this also has a V. And the convention is, the convention for labeling this is, the convention for labeling this, this battery symbol, the convention is this, this is the long line, and that's the positive terminal. That's the positive voltage. And that short line right there indicates the negative side. So in this symbol, I draw a plus or minus. I want to encourage you to draw it inside the circle so that you know it's a property of this device. And over here, the long line is the positive, and the short line is the negative. And again, we label this the way we did on the other, on the components. We label the voltages here like this, plus minus V. And the current goes in. And we label this plus minus V. And the current goes in. It's the universal convention for labeling these things. OK, let's move over to the current source. The current source is a source of constant current. And that's drawn like this. That's drawn like this with a line. Let's finish the line. And then we indicate a current source by drawing an arrow like that to indicate which way the current's going. And we label that with an I. If it's constant current, we often use a capital I. If it's a constant voltage, we often use a capital V. And again, we'll do our labeling carefully. Whatever the voltage is here, which we don't know, plus minus V. And in this case, the current goes through that way. So these are the five components that we're going to use to build circuits. One final point I want to make is for both these equations of components and these ideal current sources, these are ideal current sources, ideal voltage sources, ideal components. That means these things are mathematical perfect things that we have in our minds that we're going to try to build in the real world. But, and we'll come close. We'll come very close. We now have a wonderful set of equations. V equals IR. I equals C DV DT. V equals L DI DT. These are going to be like poetry for you pretty soon. And these ideal equations will produce all kinds of really cool circuits for us. So this is the, uh, this is the set of elements that we're going to use to design circuits. And in the upcoming videos, we'll look at each of these individual components and learn a little bit more about them. And then we'll start to combine them into some interesting circuits. See you then.